Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited to introduce you to a new Adobe Live session today. I'm sure you're still all charged from Adobe Max from last week. And we also have some surprises for next week, so stay tuned for that. Um, and it's Halloween week, so happy Halloween to everyone. Uh, a huge shout out for our live community. Uh, hello, Christy. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Gareth, Angus, um, and Tim, of course. Lovely Tim. Uh, and just a quick reminder, if you are watching us on YouTube and want to join us on the live chat, uh, do log in to behance.net slash live so we can say hello to you and even answer your questions to my special guest today. Um, so I have a very special guest with me right now and I can't wait to introduce you to her. She's an artist and illustrator from the United States originally, but she's been all over the world. She's been in Hong Kong, uh, Barcelona, and now in Berlin. Uh, she works on illustrations, street art, murals, installations uh, for clients such as Uniqlo, Adidas, IDEO, among many others. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce you to Emily Eldridge. Hi, Emily. Hey, how are you, Natalie? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Yeah, nice, uh, sort of sunny Wednesday here in Berlin. Little bit of sun, not a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we're still grateful for the sun these days. We are, yeah, anything. <laughs> Amazing. So we can't wait to hear all about you. Um, please feel free to let us know who you are, and what you do, and, you know, just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, my name is Emily Eldridge. Uh, as Natalie said, I'm originally from the States. Um, spent more than 10 years in Hong Kong two and a half years in Barcelona and now I've been here in Berlin for almost two years and I work as an illustrator, also a muralist, occasional designer, um, but just a lot of different creative, you know, stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say my background is, is mostly in illustration and illustration kind of drives a lot of the work that I do uh, as well as my mural work. So yeah, I'm going to share a little bit about my my projects today and I'll also share a little bit about how I start the design process for murals and for, uh, you know, environmental graphics. Yeah. Awesome. So, all right, Natalie, can I go through uh, this quick presentation? I think that's showing up on the screen. Yes. Looks like it. All right. So I'll just share with you guys a little bit of my work. Um, hopefully this <laughs> goes smoothly. Here's a quick look at my studio slash living room here in Berlin. This is where I'm sitting to give you guys a little bit of context. I'm looking at that screen right now. Uh, my neon sign in the background there. Um, and yeah, I do a lot of digital work here and also have a little bit of space on the other side, which is hard to see for painting and, you know, larger projects. But my, you know, computer setup is kind of here. And yeah, I make illustrations. This is kind of the background of what I do. A lot of people know me for these girl characters. I kind of started doing these for quite a while. Um, always loved, you know, drawing female characters. Uh, so this is kind of like where I, I shouldn't say where I started, but this is kind of like, I guess, forms the backbone of a lot of my characters and a lot of my work. And I do digital, digital work as well as painting work. These are actually paintings on paper I did for an exhibition in Barcelona a couple of years ago at a gallery called Miscellania, which is one of my favorite galleries in Barcelona. I have to give them a shout out. And this is kind of a look at the exhibition space just to show how these look in real life. So I do, you know, computer graphics, computer work, as well as like physical paintings, painted illustrations. I do a lot with Procreate nowadays, which is, has totally changed my life using the iPad, using iPencil. Um, and I also do a lot of different type of work for clients. So I've been working with um, a newspaper in Norway called Afton Posten on their parenting column. And I've been doing a lot of like parenting themed illustrations recently, um, just about different kind of parenting issues. This is like a mom and her, or sorry, a mom and a grandmother arguing. Yeah, um, I was thinking uh, a daughter can never be that smiley when she's arguing with her mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, so I kind of had to switch gears a little bit too at the start of the pandemic. Um, obviously, like in 2019, I was traveling probably like six months out of the year for mural projects. 
And of course, this year, everything just got turned upside down. So I really started focusing more on just getting editorial work, um, looking for, you know, newspapers, magazines, publications to work with. And that's been fun. It's, it's been like a definite change of gear, I guess. But I think every, everything kind of informs each other. So even digital work can like later inform a mural and vice mm -hmm. versa. So it's been fun to kind of like just get into the digital realm again after having such a crazy 2019. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, we sort of had to adapt to, you know, to, to all of us, you know, some people just found new careers, a uh, new path. So yeah. I really, I'm, I'm happy to see that, you know, you're taking it in a positive way, you know, and you're, you're happy to jump into the digital side, uh, mm -hmm. you know, while everything uh, passes during, you know, this couple of months, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I think as artists and designers, we kind of have to just be adaptable, especially when, you know, freelancing is how you earn a living. <laughs> kind of have to just go with the flow and figure out what works. So it's been it's been fun. Um, these are kind of, this is like a glimpse of these in print in Norwegian, which I can't read at all. So I always have to Google translate everything. But it's really cool to see these in print and just have a totally new outlet for my work, you know, after doing a lot of street art and murals last year. So I also do some other projects and other types of products, sometimes surface pattern, this is a project I did over the summer with um, Fiamma, who is, uh, they make these fantastic, beautiful espresso machines in Portugal. It's a Portuguese brand. And with Mistaker Maker, who is kind of a cultural association in Portugal, uh, did these coffee machines over the summer. So these are still available, which is, which is like a really fun project. Another digital thing this year. Um, I also do mock-ups. So guys, this is not real, but... <laughs> You know what? We can dream, right? I think it's great. Like, if you're an up and coming artist, if you're an up and coming designer, like, why not just play around with like dream projects? And I think it's fun to show potential clients, like, hey, this is possible. Like, this, you know, this would look cool. And like, who knows? Maybe I don't work with Adidas on a shoe collection, but maybe another fashion brand sees this, or maybe someone else. Like, for example, I just showed the Fiamma project. That's real, and then this is this is like a mock-up. But I, I really love just exploring ideas like that, and you know, seeing what's feasible. Of course, do we have anyone in the chat that uh, has links with Adidas that maybe we can get this <laughs> true? Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. So I also did um, a neon collection, or I should say LED neons, because these are not um, like actual neon glass. But we did LED neons with Yellow Pop Studio this year. And that was so much fun. I did a whole collection. These are some mock-ups that they sent me, but this kind of shows the whole collection that we did. Um, and that was just like my also dream project to apply illustration to light. Like that's just been, I love neons. Like Hong Kong is, is totally, you know, full of neon signs. I think that's like been a huge inspiration. So I had a lot of fun making these guys over I think this launched also in the this past spring, something like that. And finally, yeah, I want to, I'll get into some murals. I also paint murals, um, which I'll explain a little bit more about as we get into this. Uh, so when I moved to Barcelona in 2016, I started to use spray paint for the first time. And um, it's super cool in Barcelona because there's legal spaces for painting, which is something that they don't have in Hong Kong. So mm -hmm. finally, I had this opportunity to just like go crazy and like not worry that I was going to get in trouble. So I started painting by myself and painting with friends. Um, this actually, this top image is actually a collaboration with my friend Levi Jacobs from the Netherlands. He's another fantastic illustrator. Uh, so I started out doing those and then started getting kind of like more involved in the art scene and getting invited to participate in stuff. Um, and I've, I've actually freelanced like kind of part time probably for like the last 10 to 15 years. But I guess only since like the last year and a half, two years, I've, I've been full time freelancing and full time artist. Um, this is another collaboration with a friend of mine in Barcelona uh, who goes by Ninja Expert. That's his artist <laughs> name. 
We have so much fun together. He taught me so much about painting and I love working with him. You can probably see the different characters here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so started getting more involved in getting invited to festivals and getting called for projects. This is another piece in Barcelona on an old prison. I don't know if anyone's from Barcelona, but um, this is like kind of a controversial place in the city. And we really tried to bring it, you know, make it a more positive space. I think the city is going to like renovate it, repurpose it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of my favorite projects I did in Hong Kong a couple of years ago. And it's super crazy there because we, you know, they use this bamboo scaffolding, which is like for every construction project around the city, you see bamboo scaffold. So I actually had to climb up and down this with like a harness. <laughs> And a guy helping me to make sure we didn't, you know, was safe and everything. I climbed up and down, uh, yeah. used spray paint. I think we did this in like five days or something. And on the right obviously shows like how it looks when it's finished. <laughs> but that was really crazy, really fun. I love Hong Kong, was, you know, it was a great project. Uh, this is another piece in Spain. This is in uh, a small city near Cordoba in the south. And the city is known for its pottery and its female artisans. So this really celebrates these like female ceramicists that kind of make the backbone of the industry there. Um, so again, kind of just translating illustration work into large scale projects. So, you know, you can probably see the correlation between the digital work that I do and then like the mural work. Uh, they're kind of the same, but kind of not. It's just like different scales and different outlets, which I think is really fun. And of course, I, I believe it could be challenging to you know, to transfer in like a small drawing to, to a larger scale. Uh, it's just a completely different uh, technique. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's there's definitely like a lot of math <laughs> involved and in you know measuring and making sure you have your dimensions correct, making sure you prepare your file. I normally you know prepare a digital file before I begin a project, which I can get a little bit into um to yeah just to kind of make sure everything's to scale make sure it fits how i want it to fit um this is in the czech republic sorry <laughs> by the way this actually this is the same project but looking at a different direction this was for a shopping mall uh in a city called kladno which is outside of prague like about an hour away from prague um wow. and really fun too they just wanted to make a more friendly space um and i kind of tried to just show like you know, the community, make a, make something kind of positive and cool and friendly and fun. Uh, this is always spray paint. Well, this one is in Barcelona and this actually can show you guys <laughs> how I start. So this, you know, on the right hand side, this is like the illustration that I drew for the mural project on the left. So I, I think I drew this one in Procreate. Sometimes I use Photoshop. Um, and then normally I'll print this out and actually take it with me to the site. And usually I like to laminate it because it gets really disgusting and like dirty. Um, this was before we, we laminated it with plastic, but yeah, I'll usually have this on site. And then actually sometimes I'll draw like a grid over it to kind of help with measurements. Or you can also add a grid, you know, in Photoshop and Illustrator on top of it. That'll help you kind of scale things, uh, if that makes sense. We can get a little more into that. Um, that could be interesting because we have Sandrine and Jackie here asking, how do you, you know, how do you actually do the process from going to smaller drawings? Yeah. To, so we we will cover that uh, in a bit, guys. A girl. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll definitely get into that. Um, this is a project I did in Hong Kong last summer uh, at an international school, and actually had some of the the secondary school students helping me to complete this. So this oh. is like a little bit of a collaboration. And this is called Art History Hide and Seek. So I don't know if anybody is like an art history nerd out there, but we this is for the art department at the school. And we wanted to kind of highlight some of these like art and design icons from like the 20th, 20th century. So you'll probably recognize like the Andy Warhol soup can. Oh, that's um, true. Salvador Dali, Melting Clock, uh, oh. Yayoi Kusama, Pumpkin, she's one of, one of my favorite Japanese artists. 
We have some design classics here, the Eames chair, uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, Matisse. I don't know, if you look closely, you can probably spot, <laughs> spot some other ones. But this was fantastic. I love working with students. Um, they learned so much as well. They, I think they were like year 12, year 13 students helping to like uh, finish this. They're art students as well. So they're gonna study arts in the future. So that was a really fun project we worked on together last summer. Picasso here. Um, and then I should mention too, some of these are done with brush and wall paint. Like this one is done with brushes. Other pieces I do with spray paint. Um, this one is another mural in uh, North Carolina, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And this was super fun because I basically, they, had, they gave me no brief. I, got, I could do whatever I wanted. I didn't, I didn't even have to show a sketch. And so this was just like a super fun project. Really difficult as well. Um, we, this was one of, the, one of the ones where like having a good sketch and um, preparing my measurements and dimensions and all of that stuff beforehand really helped. So I can show you guys actually afterwards how this started in sketch stage and then like how it got to this um, final image. So this is one of my one of my favorite pieces. And last couple, this is a piece I finished here in Berlin this past March, right before the pandemic. <laughs> squeezed, <laughs> squeezed it in before lockdowns started. Um, and this is called the thread that ties us together. So you'll see this like thread shape weaving through the characters. And um, that's kind of meant to represent the neighborhood. So the, the whole concept was like this particular neighborhood in Berlin, which is Kreuzberg, is like a really diverse area. It's, it's not necessarily German Germans that are living here. There's lots of languages spoken, lots of cultures represented. So we wanted to make something for the neighborhood that was like, just representing everybody and that would show the community aspect. Um, so the thread represents like the neighborhood and uh, you know, the fact that everyone might be different, but they have the city of Berlin in common and they have the neighborhood that they share. Um, yeah. And I think this is the last one and then we can get into like a little demo if you guys want. Uh, I'm, I made this one in um, Logroño in northern Spain for an all-female street art exhibition this past summer and that was really fun. Like girl power. <laughs> <laughs> girl, you know, female street artists. It's hard to see but this was like a whole exhibition space um, with women artists and women street artists. So again, I kind of got to do what I wanted. This one was with a brush and uh, wall paint and took around like four or five days. I used like a lot of tape to get those clean edges <laughs> and a nice crisp brush is always like great as well. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. So let me see if I can share with you guys. I don't know if we, do we want to go into like a little demo, Natalie, or like... Let's do that. I actually have a question for you from Jackie as well. You know, uh, she's wondering if you always drew in this style or like how long did it take you to evolve if that's not the case? Yeah, I mean, I think it has like, I think the style has kind of always been there, but like it, it developed over the years into something a little bit better. <laughs> so I'm sure like if I look back at my portfolio from university, you can probably see the connection, but like, I graduated like 15 years ago, so like, of course, if you draw the same thing for like 15 years, it like just slowly progresses. So I think it's been, the style has kind of always been there, but it's just developed and refined itself like over, over time, I suppose. Yeah, I'm sure like during the years, you know, you get so many influences, you meet mm -hmm. new people, new artists, so that could also influence your work as well. But you can all, you can see it in the colors, you can see it in the, in the, in the way you draw the characters and everything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't know, it's, I think it, everything takes practice too, you know? Um, I think if you just keep at it, like it kind of just comes naturally. It still takes work. I mean, sometimes I still feel like I'm like, especially when I have to draw like boys or like man characters. <laughs> it's like, oh, how do those look? So it still takes time to like develop 
you know, and develop other subject matter. I mean, sometimes I have people like clients that I don't know, maybe maybe I need to have a background or draw furniture or draw like a shoe or draw like something different. So you have to kind of still keep thinking about, okay, how does that look in my style? If I draw like this all the time, how does a shoe look? How does a how does a man character look or like I don't know. So, yeah. So was it always easier for you to draw female characters over I, I mean, of course, you see it a lot in your work. You always see the girls, the women, the grandma, mm -hmm. the mother. So, do you think it's the, because you know you, you were you were influenced a lot by female idols perhaps or I like can we know or like how is that related to your work? Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe like as a girl, maybe it just comes more naturally just to draw girls because like you know what it's like to be a girl. <laughs> and you, I don't know, I think it's for me, it's always been fun to also draw these like kind of girly things, like adding a lot of accessories or color through nails or through, you know, glasses. Like it just adds more opportunity for color playing with like hair accessories and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe it's kind of just like a natural thing that I always drew. Uh -huh. um, but definitely I have some like idols as far as like female artists. Um, I don't know if anybody will know, there's an artist called Margaret Kilgallen who um, actually passed away, I think in the 90s, but she did these like really monumental female figures. And I, I saw her work actually when I was in university and just was like, so I think subconsciously she probably influences a little bit or maybe that was like kind of like a, a little spark that ignited into like developing these yeah. big characters. Yeah. Nice. So we have we have an, a mural that you're already done here. Uh, yeah, right? I think. Oh, great. Yeah. So I, I showed you guys in the presentation the final product. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to show you how bad it looks like before I start, just to show you that like it, it takes work to, I mean, it doesn't always look perfect. Right. So I wanted to show you guys like a little bit about how this all begins. So this was for a mural festival, Talking Walls Mural Festival, and they sent me a photo of the wall. So I knew where I was going to paint and I knew, um, the size, <laughs> I had them measure, measure it for me. So normally if you're working with a client, at least if they can give you the measurements, even if they can't get you like a great photo, because of course, sometimes a building might have trees in front of it, or it might be difficult for them to photograph it straight on. At least if you can get the measurements that can help you with your sketch. And essentially I start a sketch for a mural the same way I start an illustration. So in this case, I actually, you can see, I photoshopped, like, I think that there was, the wall was like gray or something. So I think I photoshopped this white. <laughs> so I had a clean canvas. You can probably actually see, I don't know if it's going to zoom in, these like, this is like some of the architecture that was in the um, building. <laughs> so anyway, I basically, painted white over this in Photoshop. And then I literally just start sketching with like a Wacom tablet, or of course you can do this in Procreate or whatever with your, you know, your stylus. Just started rough sketching like a pencil, um, the idea. <laughs> and then started adding notes. I, I always do notes because it helps me think. Um, but you can just see how horrible this looks. I'm like a not, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I'm not a great sketcher. I get really, really rough sketches at first. So based on this, I was like, okay, I kind of have my colors. I have like a rough idea. Okay. Like let's clean this thing up. So I got to go through the layers here guys. So hang on a sec. In fact, I don't want to interrupt your process, but we already have some comments on the chat asking <laughs> which Photoshop version is Emily I know, using? I know, I know, guys. Emily, Emily is an authentic, <laughs> vintage uh, artist. Vintage. So. <laughs> yeah. This is CS6, and guys, it's real life. <laughs> you know, when you're a full time artist, like, listen, it still works. <laughs> um, I, and also a lot of times nowadays I'm using Procreate. I have an iPad as well. 
So Procreate has really changed a little bit of my digital work. But yes, I know. I need I need an upgrade. So yeah. <laughs> it's on my on my to-do list. Um anyway. And, no, you know, talking about uh not being a good like not being good at sketches, uh, you know, I and from my personal point of view, when you see storyboards before they go into the production of a video or animation, I also like, you know, like you don't have to be good at sketches if the final yes. result is, you know, you know how it's going to be like. And mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's an, it's it's fundamental to go through that phase, you know, even if you're not doing the perfect sketch or even if you're like filling your uh, canvas with so many like notes and stuff. So I think that's, it's beautiful to see how, you know, you go through that until you get to the perfect, you know, result as a mural, you know, with all these colors and all these details. Um, I think it's awesome. Yeah, and I think that for sure, that goes with like, a, I'm sure a lot of our favorite artists and designers, like it's not always perfect on the first go, you know, it takes, it still takes a lot of work to like get it cleaned up and like, and yeah, I, I generally have like an idea in my head and it does help me just to be super loose at the beginning, um, just to like get it out there and get it on the paper or on the tablet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let me, let me see if I, I don't know if it's in this file. Yeah. You guys can kind of just see, I kept refining, kept refining, kept refining. And actually, I think I ended up taking this over. I think I grabbed this rough sketch and then I was like, OK, I need to like make this clean, clean it up, get a really good version. So I think I took that this layer, made a new file and then just totally cleaned up my lines. And of course, they're not they're still not perfect because I was like, this is this is not actually going to go to a client. This is going to go on the wall. So even if some of this is not exactly how I want it, with a perfectly straight, clean, clean edge. At least I kind of, I still have the idea. So I basically took, you know, finished this illustration separately in a separate file here. And then I think this is my final version, uh, which I think cut off some of the measurements, but this is uh, in feet, guys, sorry, not in meters for those watching in Europe. This is 80 mm -hmm. feet wide by 20 feet tall. So just to share a little, it might be a little bit hard to explain here, but um, if I know, there's, there's a few different ways to kind of get this on the wall. So in this case, uh, you could use a grid system and I can kind of show you guys that. Actually, maybe I'll do that really quick. So I could, when I actually get to the site, if I know this is 20 feet tall by 80 feet wide, I could draw with spray paint a grid, right? Something like, imagine that these are spray lines, but that takes a lot of measuring and you have to, you know, you gotta make sure that things are straight. Um, so that can be a little complicated. Yeah. It's like but real life care at the same time, no? Because you have to know exactly the, the measurements, right? While you're yeah. doing it. Exactly. So what I can, I'll show you guys another way to do it. I'm going to turn this layer off for a second. This is the wall. You can see I have photoshopped. So actually what a lot of artists do, uh, let's see, it's going to go. What a lot of artists do, um, I'll just do this, is when they get to the site, uh, you would be presented with this huge wall. And what a lot of muralist you is something called a doodle grid whoops hang on a sec switch my color so when you get to the site with the spray can or whatever imagine these are nicer okay i'm drawing with my mouse <laughs> uh you would get up on your lift or get up on your ladder and you would fill the entire wall with spray painted doodles or squiggles oh looks like my computer's a little slow here might be the bandwidth you guys kind of get the idea so imagine that this is with your spray can what you would do then so imagine you've done this on the whole wall <laughs> all right running a little slow it was, here. Uh, the doodle, was it the doodle layer yeah the, uh, the doodle grid so it's actually not a grid but um we call it like a doodle doodle grid so imagine if you 
Oof. <laughs> Big delay. <laughs> I think I think we're well, off whatever. the grid. <laughs> off the grid. So imagine if you get to the wall, you're gonna spray paint all these crazy shapes over the whole thing. Then you take a photo and take it back to your computer, or there's certain apps that can do this as well. And you would overlay that grid with your design. So now if I print this and take it to the site, I can actually see where everything needs to go. So because these lines are already on the wall, I can paint over them and I can mark my final sketch based on where these, these guys are. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So essentially when I'm getting up to the wall, I can see, all right, the top of her glasses hits that crazy line that I painted. Um, her, of course, this would be much more complex, right? You'd have this whole thing filled. Um, or like, for example, oh, the curve of her hand is like almost the whole length of this vertical line that I drew. Oh, okay, her fingers cross this line right here. Whoop. <laughs> So I, that's another way to do it. That's kind of like the second way. So one is you can, one way is you draw the grid, but you'd have to measure everything out. That would be really difficult. You'd have to have a huge measuring tape, make sure everything was exact. This is a lot easier. And this is what a lot of muralists and a lot of street artists do. The other thing you guys can do is if you'll notice on this particular building, there are some architectural details and I can also use those as my guide. So I can see, all right, her blue ponytail covers this corner of this ventilation thing or this light thing. Or like there were these bricks on the sides. It's like, okay, um, her the center of this ponytail comes up to this brick and so on and so on. That's a little bit more difficult. I do do that sometimes uh, based on like what type of building it is. So you can kind of use existing architecture as a grid also, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, so this is- All the elements on that wall, you don't just focus on the black canvas. You also like kind of interact with the, with the rest of the shapes that you have there. Yeah, exactly. And it, it really depends on like what building it is, like, you know, what you have. Cause sometimes, so here, maybe I can show you guys like a new project. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Um, so the let me they come to life with all the, you know, the circumstances. <laughs> yeah, hope hopefully, hopefully you guys will see this. This is like a super super top secret sneak peek, still to be <laughs> confirmed because this is this is only as far as I have gotten. But this is like a sketch for a new project that hopefully will happen. <laughs> and you can see, I'll show you guys again how I started. So here's my photo and actually I've photoshopped out some stuff because there used to be a guy here and you can probably see my bad Photoshop job down here. <laughs> but just to have this like blank canvas because uh, this is what I'm going to paint. And then what I've done is sketched over top of it, wrote some weird notes. <laughs> made my little color palette and what i think is important too which is maybe very simple for those of you guys that already know photoshop um, i always try to put this layer on multiply because if it's on normal i mean you can leave it normal but i like to be able to see get a feeling for how this would look in real life with like a shadow with a light so if i, I like to keep this sketch layer on multiply um, and then generally what I'll do, let me see if I can get my Wacom tablet set up here. Uh, when I'm, when I have a sketch kind of rough like this, uh, I'm going to turn down the opacity. Sorry, my computer's a little slow guys. I think it's the bandwidth and then underneath I'll start coloring. Um, and again here, this is not so big. So actually this one, you might be able to measure yourself a really simple grid. For example, we could do just quadrants. So on site for something like this, I could perhaps with a spray can, just mark myself some really simple quadrant lines like that. And that would already help me to check where my sketch goes when I start to sketch this on, if that makes sense. 
I hope this is making sense to those of you guys watching. I know it can be. I'm, really I'm not a mural expert myself. So, as long as I'm understanding it, I'm sure the, the experts and the talents on the chat are, are as well. <laughs> cool. Awesome. So. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a joke actually, because I've never heard of a wall printer. We have John here who asked if you ever use the wall printer. Is that uh... like you mean a vinyl, like a um, like a, a vinyl billboard kind of thing? I'm not sure. Maybe John can clarify it. <laughs> but for, okay, you know, moving on, we also have Kim asking. You know, like of course you work digitally, but then. When do you decide if you want to use a brush or, I mean, painting or spray painting? Yeah, that's a really good question too. Um, I think it kind of depends, for me, it depends on how much detail I want to add. Because sometimes I think like with a brush, for me personally, I, I like, I think the lines are a little bit cleaner. Um, I'm not, I think with spray paint, sometimes it can be a little bit rougher. I mean, depends also on your skill level. Some people with spray paint are like amazing and like they can, you know, it looks incredible. For me, I kind of go back and forth. Also depends on the time frame. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the image I showed you from Hong Kong, but that one I had a really tight time frame of like, I think a, like less than a week to finish it. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I'm going to finish that with like using a brush because it just takes so long to dry you might have yeah. rainy weather you have to stop if it's raining and i was like listen we're gonna do spray paint because it dries in 30 seconds <laughs> it's super <sighs> easy to fix if i make a mistake and it just goes a lot faster especially for my style because i have this like really flat colors for me it's just a matter of like making sure my sketch is really good and then filling it in you know um also, the, the mural I showed you guys in Berlin, that only took five days because I used spray paint. But if I had used um, like wall color, <laughs> it would just definitely take a lot longer because you have to wait for colors to dry in between. You know, if I start painting this yellow, I can't immediately paint. Like I'll just use the screen for an example. I can't immediately start painting blue if the yellow is still wet. So I have to wait for the yellow to dry and then so uh -huh. on and so on. That's a challenge. So, yeah, it also, it can just depend like on, you know, I mean, this area also is nice, this particular one, because it looks like there's a roof. So hopefully if it rained in this location, it would be okay. <laughs> but yeah. other times with clients, they, they say, okay, you have a, we have a week to finish this and like spray paint just goes a lot faster. So totally depends on what you're comfortable with and also depends like on your budget, on your time frame. On the weather is it like rainy and sometimes sometimes spray paint it's you know it's too cold to use it or it's too hot to use it like it freezes up if it's like freeze you know super cold outside so yeah <laughs> that's that matters also when taking the decision so going back to the printer wall printer wall uh, yeah question. Uh, there are printers that can print on walls they spray ink basically have you ever used that tool Oh, oh, uh, printer on the wall. I'm still confused about what that is. The I machine mean, that prints on the wall by like uh, spraying the ink, literally. I oh, guess. interesting. <laughs> I have I have not heard about that actually. Unless it's like I know that there are um, machines that spray. It's like a like a spray gun. I think that's can, what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah, those, I haven't used one of those yet, but I would love to, especially, I think that's nice when you're doing like a background color, because mm. you could fill an entire wall probably in like two minutes or something. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Yeah, they have like um, kind of spray guns, which is like a, basically like the same thing as a, the same concept as a spray can, but it's like with a hose, and like, uh, <laughs> I think uh -huh. just a bigger nozzle and I think there's like air pressure as well. So you can just cover mm -hmm. like huge spaces really yeah. quickly. And I honestly, personally, I, I love the, I love, you know, most of the, 
uh, like how you guys go through it. Like you don't need an extra tool maybe to guide you. I think it's beautiful how you, you're able to, to, to manage that all by, you know, doing the measurements and like sketching it before. I don't know. I think I, I would prefer this process more. I think it's more fascinating to be honest. Yeah, I think, I think the spray guns can be really nice. Um, if you're trying to cover like a, a huge surface really quickly, like I said, maybe for a background color, um, if you needed to, you know, if I wanted like a massive wall to have a blue background, it'd be a lot easier to spray with like one of those huge sprayers rather than like roll, <laughs> rolling and rolling and rolling with a paint roller. So, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's tons of tools. It's super, I would say it's super fun. Murals are great. Like you should definitely, I don't know. I, I would say everybody should, should try <laughs> like. It's it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, so yeah I'm, I'm, oh sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's just it's everything is so interesting. I know you know we have like t twenty minutes left, but I just wanted to ask you know, talking about that, what would be your advice for people who want to well who, illustrators, for instance, that want to start you know experimenting with that field? Would you have like a certain advice or tips that could help them? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I actually like. <laughs> I'll, I'll draw and talk to you guys. This is not going to be super clean either. You'll, you'll see kind of like a little bit messy sketching here. But again, I can I would I would do this first and then clean it up later. I don't know. I think for, for murals, yeah, it can be super overwhelming to know where to get started. Um, but I would say like start small first, like talk to friends or family that might have like a small business or like, you know, see if you're local, if you're an illustrator as well, like um, see if your local coffee shop wants to like trade you, you know, like if you did a mural for them, could you get free coffee for a month? Especially when you're just starting out and you might not know the skills yet. Like I think just to start small and start locally is like a great, great way to start. Or as it like, you know, for example, um, some cities, Barcelona has legal spaces for painting walls. So I know like a lot of my friends and I, also like classmates of mine that were, that were also illustrators. Um, we would just try to like get some sketches and go out and paint on a Saturday. And like, if it looks bad, don't post it anywhere, you know? Um, and of course it's a little bit easier with spray paint because you don't have as many materials to take out on the street with you. But I think just like starting small is like the, the best advice. Like don't try to overwhelm yourself with like, Oh my gosh, I don't know how to paint like a, a building. <laughs> but I think you learn as you go and like just start start small, start locally, see if, you know, even to see if like your your parents would let you paint the garage <laughs> or something. Okay. It's funny you mentioned that because Kim on the chat said she will start practicing tonight on the walls of her mother's. <laughs> so <laughs> yes exactly exactly i think that's like the best way to learn i mean that was that was kind of how it happened for me too um like when i i think the first mural that i ever painted was back in 2008 <laughs> so show you guys how old i am now um <laughs> there was a bar that my friends and i used to go to a lot in hong kong and the owner of that bar, like every month, he would let a different artist like paint the facade. And like, we would go there every weekend and I was already like illustrating. I had, you know, I was working on my illustration stuff kind of on the side, but I saw like, oh, you know, there's artists painting this every month. And so I, I kind of knew the owner and I was like, hey, you know, do you think I could like maybe try that next month or something? And he's like, yeah, okay, like send send me a sketch. Like, let's talk, Let, let's see your sketch first. <laughs> and I sent him a sketch and um, he's like, okay, that sounds good. Uh, I'll, I'll let you do it. Like, you know, let's do it this weekend. We have, I'll get you some ladders. I think he painted the, um, he painted the background color for me. So I just worked on top of it. And wow. I had like two friends helping and like, you know, I think it took us like two or three days. I had my sketch and I had them helping and we, and I just did it. And then it was like addiction since then, basically. 
but that you know that's the same kind of thing like a local business that i i knew the owner we, we all of us were friends um and just you know ask like i think the worst somebody can do is say no i'm you know i don't want a mural but um yeah i think i think that's a good way to start another thing is like mock-ups i showed you guys the mock-up of my oh, why is this not working? Ah, brush i showed you guys the mock-up of like that adidas sneaker i think uh -huh. if you're an illustrator and you haven't done a lot of murals or you're not you haven't gotten a lot of mural commissions i really don't think there's anything wrong with creating mock-ups as long as you're clear that it is a mock-up and uh -huh. you know just even to show prospective clients or prospective art directors how you imagine your work um living you know even take one of your existing illustrations uh throw it over a photo of a wall and just even just to have something like that in your portfolio that you could share with people or share with potential clients like this is what i envision you know i think as long as you feel confident that you can do it then it's totally. okay <laughs> but no, yeah some... I think... oh sorry. sorry i'm sorry no don't worry i'm just saying that with some clients it might be challenging because let's say you're working for a client that is not from the creative industry but they want you to do a mural, like, I don't know, in the, in the office or something. You mm -hmm. need to kind of make it as realistic as possible because sometimes it's hard for the client to kind of visualize how yeah. it's going to look. That's a, that's a great point, too. Um, that's the thing is, like, not everybody works in the creative industry. So for some people that are not creative um, workers themselves, it can be super hard to visualize, like, what, what an end product looks like. So... That's also why I, I generally try to do stuff like this before I start a project, at least to uh -huh. show, you know, I mean, you the whole thing and you kind of do the basic uh, layout. Yeah, uh, exactly. Which kind like, of, I think it answers, you know, Sandrine on the, on the chat, she asked if, if you have ever like did a mural straight to the wall without doing a mock-up before, but I guess it, it depends if it's like a job or um, did you ever, have so to go through the only ones that I've done like that have been like the um the street art ones which I showed you guys the like spray paint stuff in Barcelona because that's uh -huh. just like for free and for fun <laughs> so with those I'll usually just have like a really rough sketch because of course you have to know what colors to bring with you if you, you know if you're gonna buy spray paint you want to know what colors to buy so you, you usually try to like make a rough little sketch first even if it's in your sketchbook so you know okay i want to buy pink i want to buy red and i want to buy blue and white spray spray colors or those are the colors i need to like finish this piece so in those cases i don't bother to do a mock-up because it's just for fun it's just like to experiment and to try something new by myself like on the street but i usually i always have like at least a rough sketch or like a rough idea only for the sake of like knowing what spray color to purchase um yeah, yeah. so yeah i mean again i think translating illustration into um into a mural is is works really well i think it's really cool to see nowadays that there's like a lot of illustrators crossing over into muralists and vice versa mm. um I think that's, you know, it's not just about graffiti anymore. Like, I think murals are really having a moment. There's so many mural festivals, like, around the world nowadays, too. And I think it's like, a, it's an amazing way to communicate, you know, to visually communicate some, like, for example, the mural that you did in Berlin, where you said that, you know, it's inspired by the neighbors, it's inspired by the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just like even like like we said even if someone is not from the creative industry if it's just someone passing by or walking on the street and they see that i think it's just um it brings up so much you know for yeah for it's it's super i think it's super special i think it really you know i think that's what's nice too is that um uh, <laughs> sorry it it really changes the environment, it changes the city, it changes the landscape. And I think it's cool. I think people enjoy that. They like, you know, I, I love to see that walking around, just like something super unexpected, especially in like a gray city like Berlin, where it doesn't, it's not that sunny. Like, it's really nice to see 
art and you know on the walls arts yeah. around the city and it, you know in, in other cities too like barcelona mm. um, a, a lot of cities around the world you're starting to see arts and murals and um yeah it's cool it's it's like i think it makes life a little bit more fun you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> as cheesy as this sounds totally especially in this it sounds super cheesy <laughs> No, but you know, it is, we need that. We need this kind of cheese, cheesiness, you know, even like <laughs> uh, we need colors. We need, you know, all these good vibes. And, you know, especially if, you know, some cities are in lockdown or whatever, if they're going to the grocery stores and they see, for example, your mural, I think it does make it, uh, a difference. It, it makes a change. Yeah, I think it's I think it's so much fun. And just, yeah, I think that's what's cool about art, too. Like it just changes the landscape and like... Um, offers something different, you know, compared to what what we might normally see. Um, oh, so you're naming your layers now. This is- Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, just to kind of, so this is, this is nice too, I guess, like just to get a little bit more technical here. If later I decide that I want to change these colors and I don't like this orange or I want to maybe play around with the background color, it's just nice, probably a lot of you guys know this already, especially if you're, if you're illustrators, it's really great to have layers. Like if you have everything on one layer, it's a lot more difficult. This one I showed you guys before, I was bad because it's all on one layer. Just cause like I, I kind of got into it. I started drawing and just kept going and I didn't, I just didn't have time to like stop <laughs> and divide everything. But like, I think it's, very important to keep everything on layers it's super easy to change it like we could go up here play around with like uh maybe this is purple you know or maybe even do something like i'll duplicate this layer turn this one off like let me just keep this on hand as like mm, maybe this is gonna be uh where did i where was it like yeah maybe i want to see how this this looks with like purple hair instead so I can, you know, still have that as orange copy. I can change it, change it to purple, whatever. But yeah, I think this this is a nice way for me, at least, to kind of edit later. Um, yeah. So you allow to also you allow yourself to also kind of experiment with the colors, even if you already had some colors in mind. I guess like you yeah, could also change some. Yeah, for sure. And I, actually, like with this one too, I'm still not sure about the background color. So um, I don't know. I didn't have I don't have a background color yet. So I'm still kind of like, mm, if I do blue in the background, for example, I might have to change this blue hair over here into something else. So yeah, just to kind of keep everything straight. Ah, and then another thing up here too is I have my palette. So I grabbed this from my original sketch. I'll just turn this back up again. Uh, before this was on multiply. I just basically grabbed these colors, created a little swatch palette up here. Whoops. And but then it's just easy to grab to change my brush color. Mm -hmm. Of course, before we do that on multiply because it would change the color. So um, yeah, this is just like a little bit of my process. And I think it's, it, you know, for me too, this is really similar to the way that I would work on an illustration yeah. uh, for a client or for like a digital illustration whether that's in Photoshop, whether that's with Procreate on the iPad, keeping everything in layers makes it a lot easier. Especially too, if like the client sees it and they're like, I hate that, you know, that flower, like get rid of it. It's just easier to edit and take things out or move things around, mm -hmm. you know, um, even to do something like if we wanted to, oops. Probably a lot of you guys know this already if you're Photoshop users, but um, yeah, even just to like move certain things around, uh, whatever works. All right, so I'm gonna- We have some US fans here on the chat from Melinda. She's having, uh, she's watching you right now while having breakfast apparently. Hey, cool. <laughs> oh, and we also have a, a hello from Kabata Patata from Katie. Hey. I did not know her. You were colleagues, apparently. Yeah, we were classmates. Hi, Katie. <laughs> we both studied <laughs> illustration together in Barcelona, actually. So um, 
We studied at a school called BAU, B-A-U, Centro uh -huh. Universitario de, de Diseño. Nice. They, they have a really great illustration program at that school. So props to BAU, props to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Miss it. All right, let me just reducing my brush size here. Kind of jumping back and forth between my, my Wacom tablet and my my um, mouse, <laughs> which is not the not the best. But yeah, I mean, you could also do the same thing in Illustrator too, guys. Um, obviously, Illustrator, you're going to get a little bit cleaner look if you're drawing with a vector. You can see now, like, this is a little bit rough, obviously. So I'm going to need to, you know, if I were really going to take this into like a finished illustration state, I would need to do a lot of work to clean this up because this is obviously like rough lines. But I still kind of consider like this is for me still sort of a sketch stage. So it doesn't necessarily. I mean, this is super special. We're actually seeing in a sneak peek from, you know, an upcoming <laughs> Yeah, I hope. Well, it might it might totally change before this actually gets on the wall, but um, <laughs> at least, yeah, just, I mean, exactly too. Like I might do a different version, like save this as one version and then play around with like a second idea and then compare the two or, or discuss with the client like, okay, which one do you guys like better? Um, which color palette do you guys like better? So it's, yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll, I might offer like a couple uh options to a client which i think they they also enjoy to see to give them a choice um yeah. for this particular wall there is not a theme it's like a free free theme so it's kind of nice because i can kind of just do what i want basically which is i think every designer's dream when you can just do what you're what you envision <laughs> oops so before we have around three minutes left and before we wrap it up i we, i would like to ask you also something interesting that yep. came to the chat uh the texture of the wall obviously also i mean you know i'm sure that it kind of affects the mural at the at the end right uh in in the case where like you get a job and you're not able to actually see like that's the texture of the wall like mm -hmm. how how do you kind of confront that challenge yeah, actually, that's a really good thing to ask a client as well. Um, because, like, for example, I, I did a mural in Barcelona, um, which I showed you guys, but I'm, I won't jump back there. But the, or I showed you guys the one I think on the prison walls, and that wall was absolutely like deteriorating so badly. It was just in really bad shape. Um, and it was very difficult to use brush and to use wall paint because. It just was like disintegrating every time you'd add a layer. So actually in that case, it probably would have been better to use spray paint because it would have gotten into these cracks and crevices and rocks and sandy stuff and just like gone on a little bit better. So I think that's something to keep in mind if you have a mural commission to discuss a, at least like briefly with your client what what surface you're going to paint on or if they can send you a photo and you can kind of check it out yourself um, also for example the one in hong kong we had to be careful about the windows because people were living in those <laughs> those flats oh. so like i had to really be careful not to spray on the windows and just keep stuff like that in mind so yeah. um yeah, and again that could affect the material that you choose with mm -hmm. whether you decide to do spray paint or a spray gun we you know the paint sprayer we talked about or whether you decide to use a brush um there's a lot of factors to kind of keep in mind with uh yeah with your materials you know making the right decisions about what, what materials work the best i think is good <laughs> yeah so i hope, hope that answered the question a little bit Amazing, Emily. I, I believe, you know, we all learned so much from this amazing session from you. Uh, and, you know, working on a mural cannot be cannot be that easy. So it's good to know, you know, to learn about your process and how you go from from that point to, to, the, to the larger scale. So thank you so much for sharing everything with us. 
Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been my pleasure and really fun to like have this little chat and, and nice to meet you as well. And like, of thanks every, thanks all you guys for tuning in and for all of your questions. Yeah, Hope of you... course, if you want to learn more about Emily's work, just follow her on Instagram and check out her portfolio. And hopefully in a couple of weeks or something, we will be able to see some live action from her on an upcoming mural. <laughs> Crossing fingers, crossing arms. <laughs> yeah. And I want to say a huge thank you to the to the live community. Sorry, you wanted to say something, Emily. No, 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 not at all. Just a thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to the live community for sure. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone who joined us. Um, please remember, if you want to uh, keep the conversation going, which is awesome. I'm seeing, you know, so much action in there. You can join us on Discord. Uh, Tim, thank you, Tim. He just uh, <laughs> shared the link um and yeah and don't forget that we're live every day from 12 to 1 and in fact tomorrow is gonna be a very special halloween edition Ooh. so i invite everyone to check it out tomorrow it's gonna be crazy fun i'm not gonna spoil it but yeah um so yeah thank you so much emily and uh we will keep in touch and yeah thank you for sharing all this inspiration with us yeah thank you guys so much as well thank you too natalie a great host <laughs> Oh, thank you. Mega hugs. Special yeah. hugs. hugs, for hugs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye guys. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.